Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching this. Wherever you're watching this, at home, at work, on the way to school, I don't know, hopefully when you're not driving. Yeah, don't be watching YouTube when you're not driving, that's not a good idea. Right, <laughs> today's video, today I'm going to be laying these Metcalf stone paving slabs that you can get in little packs like this, the Metcalf individual stone paving slabs um a few weeks ago you may have seen the video where i did my roads with polyfiller well today we're going to be putting the paths down next to the roads up on this board over here which still need to do in over there i had a bit of an experiment with them originally as you can see i have done a few little paths on there but today we're going to be working together on these here now, since I'm recording this on my mobile phone, because the camera is much better than my digital camera, would you believe it? That's probably because my digital camera is quite a few years old now. Um, I'm not going to be doing any speedy uppy bits. I'm just going to be doing, I've done this, done this, done this, and showing you how to do it, and then just bringing you updates as we go along. Otherwise, I'll be holding the phone at some sort of angle while trying to do it all the time, and it'll take forever. And not to mention, it'll probably destroy the muscles in my arm. But... There is a few tools that we are going to need. We're going to need a pencil, so we can mark out. I have two pencils. We're going to need the, the, the paving slabs, obviously. I've got a pair of tweezers here where you can just use it to modify and make small adjustments. We're going to need a paintbrush, a ruler to make sure they're straight, and our trusty old friend, PVA glue. So that's what we're going to need. So, let's crack on, and I'll show you how to do this. Putting down paving slabs. This is going to be a fun day. So I've lifted my board off the railway. And as you can see, I've got my Metcalf houses here. So on the board, with my roads ready to go with the polyfiller. That chimney pot needs fixing. I'll do that in a minute. So as you can see, what we've done here is I've gone around the houses and I've just outlined where the back alleyway, this is going to be a back alleyway down here. And this is TR for terraced housing. Same here and same with the shops here. We just outlined where it's going to be. Now, the HO or double O roads I've got are about 2.7 inches wide. So that's about there on my ruler. So that gives us roughly an area to work from. So what you want to do is you just want to just like just lightly mark it. It gives you an area from where it to work from. Obviously, when we built the roads, we did overlay so we could have the paths over because what's happening these paths are going to go underneath the houses they're going to support the houses up so that it looks like the path goes under or up to the houses and then i'm going to get rid of this card by scalping away around here eventually and making it all look nice so i'm going to get more houses for that um as for the back alleyway back here i'm probably going to be using some scatter stuff or i might just use some paint and some slabs i'm not quite sure how i'm going to do my back alleyways yet but when i get more houses when i get more houses I'll do the back alleyway then, but today we're just going to concentrate on these paths. So let me take these houses off the board, and then we'll start laying some slabs down. Welcome back. So, the slabs you get from Metcalf are in a sheet like this. And as you can see, we've got these rectangle slabs, we've got these smaller half slabs, and a few curved slabs, and then these bits we cut off to make um, the edging. Now... You can play around with these little ones of curves on look up here and down here and make like larger curved sections or you can make them square. I tend to make mine a bit square just because I find it easier and I just I don't want to mess around with all the curved ones because you go for so many packs. Now when you peel these off they are actually adhesive on the back but it's not the best adhesive. If you're only putting it down temporarily, I'd recommend you using the adhesive. But obviously that is where our wonderful friend, the PVA glue, comes into play. Because all we're going to do is literally put a bit of glue down. Spread it out with your paintbrush. Bop them down. It's really that simple. It's all about just making a pattern. So the first thing to do with this, I don't know if you can see on the road here. But just here is a little line where the edge of the houses are going to be. All I'm going to do is you don't need an awful lot of glue. 
is just put a zigzag, 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 zigzag of glue. You only want to do it in small sections because the glue will dry and it is actually quite time consuming is this. And then all you're doing is you're spreading the glue out just so you've got a base to build the paths on. Really quite simple, not much else to it. So we've got the base down, that's not an issue. I would recommend starting from an edge of a board, like here, if you've got it from an edge, or an edge you know where you can, an edge you can start from. So you can start a certain pattern. And I'm gonna try and do this one-handed, it's not really recommended. But all you've got to do is peel off a piece, and then literally from where that line is, that's about there, is start it there. And then all you do is you build it up like you would the bricks of a house. And then the next one, making sure you're pushing down on the glue so it makes nice contact. These things are quite adaptable, you can play around with them. And when you get, I'm going to put it about three in for now. And then all you do is you build it up like the bricks of a house, pushing down, making sure they're down. You would use the half slabs to continue the pattern on, like so. The idea behind the tweezers is that the tweezers are really ideal just to get it in the exact correct position. If you just need a bit of precision. Sorry, I'm not quite centered there. They're also really good at the tweezers, especially these like fine little needle nose kind of things. Very fine ones like that. For just literally getting them into position and getting them off the actual card. Not the best at the minute, but I'm gonna neaten that up in a second. I'll be back in a few in a few seconds and I should have done some more and I'll show you what I mean. So, as you can see, I've done a little bit of paving here. And as you can see, not all of this is perfect. It's a little bit bumpy, which is what I wanted. That's why I did the polyfiller road. I didn't want a perfectly smooth road on this board. And that's because I want it to look a little bit old style, a little bit old fashioned. I'm set in the 1940s, so it's not like it's going to have modern road markings and uh, traffic lights. At least, not as we know them today. So, one tip I did do, and one thing I have learnt from the last board, because on some of the last boards over there, they were a little bit wonky at times, is if you lay a ruler down next to the slabs, like so, in the line you want to do, when you are positioning your slabs, like this, so if you get your tweezers and you literally position them like this, you can literally just push it up to the ruler, like so, Put in the ones behind it. This is where the tweezers come in really handy to get them in because sometimes this can be a little bit fiddly. And then what you will find is that after laying them down, tweezers are very good for this sort of little fiddly work. When you take the ruler away, it is still more or less in a perfectly straight line. Okay, it's not exactly 100% perfect. It never will be, unless you spend hours and hours and hours, but my advice is not to rush. Now, this section here has nearly used an entirely full sheet of these. I haven't cracked up in the second pack yet, but as you can see, it contains 1,300 of these little adhesive slabs. <laughs> Enough to cover 900 square centimetres. So that's what, 90 square? 90 square centimetres. That's 9,000 square mil. Something like that. Yep, it contains enough of them. It contains a lot of them. <laughs> so there's a lot of slabs. And I have been finding these all over the house. Because if you drop one, it will get attached to socks. It will get attached to your jeans. It will get attached to your mother. It will get attached to your dog, your cat, your hamster, you name it. It gets attached to it. And it will end up in your bedroom. It will end up in your 
bathroom, you'll find them in your fridge, you'll find them in your washing basket. Trust me, they'll be everywhere if you drop them, so be careful with them. I learned that the hard way. So anyways, I'm going to continue on with this road, and as you can see, I'm going to do it in little sections. We're going to come up to this little section up here, this uh, corner section shortly. I'll show you how to do that when we reach it. And we will crack on with getting more slabs down. Right, I've come to the end of the road. <laughs> Would you believe it? So, using your kits, move this paper out of the way, and the lines that you should have already marked up where they're going, hopefully. We can see roughly that we need, that's bang on, is that actually? That's bang on where I wanted it to be. We need about three in, like that, one, two, three, to effectively cover this side of the, the road. So, to make it look all nice and professional, what you're going to do is you're going to continue this pattern, but on this, which will come across here, and then back down, keeping it facing all one way. I would advise trying to keep everything on the railway or everything facing the same rough direction. So this is all facing forward. In fact, if you look at all my paving slabs on here, they're all facing forward. So they're all kind of uniform. Of course, you don't have to do that. Like I said, it is your railway, but obviously you're gonna, this, is the, this is the front of the board. So they will be facing forward that way. So you'll see them like that. Just so that you can have them all the same way around really and keep the pattern uniform so it's consistent throughout the entire two boards. After all, you want to make this illusion like it's one paving slab. You know, you're not going to go around a, um, a city centre such as, I don't know, like, like York, Leeds, Manchester, anything like that, and then the paving slabs suddenly alter direction because they feel like it, especially on the same street, which this is here, continuation of that street over there. So you've got to think about that. So I'm going to crack and turn around this corner, get it over and get it over to here. Once I've done that, I'll be right back. Welcome back. As you can see, what I've done is I've finished this row up here, and I'm doing this row down here, and I'll continue this to the edge of the baseboard. So I've had a little bit of an idea of what I'm going to do here at the front. Now, as, as you can see, at the front of the railway here, I've got quite a lot of road space. In fact, I've got nearly twice the amount that I actually need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure to about two and a half, about here, scale road. And if you notice, I've actually got some, some space. So that, hopefully, is going to be enough space for me to put in maybe some little front gardens, just as a little bit of extra detail on the front. The only the houses on the entire layout which are going to have some sort of a garden. They have got the little back courtyards. But giving them something up front, quite nice. I can do some little walls and stuff. So I'll be doing the steps. The steps, not the steps. The um, I'll be only doing a very small single road here. So I'll be doing a few paving stones here. Just so that we've got a little bit of garden space. And then we'll do the, the um, paths from there. So I'm going to crack on with this. Get this side done. I've got some custard donuts to eat. Oh, snacks. Always important. And I've got coffee being brewed in the kitchen. And then I'm going to crack on over here. And I'm going to attempt to give them some little front gardens. They might only be a little, but they should be all right. So, let's crack on. Right, welcome back, guys. Sorry about the shadow. The light is behind me. But as you can see, I have done the paving all the way around this little square. Kind of up to the edge here. Of course, I don't know what's happening here. But next, we're going to be putting in here, along the edges, the um, curbstones. So on the kits here, you can see we have the curbstones which are here. These little strips here. Here, and you've got the little rounded ones you can use on rounded edges. All you basically do is you cut them out, and then we'll stick them down. So back in a second, I'll show you an example of that. Welcome back, as you can see. So all I've done here is I've put a little strip in to emulate the curb. And I've gone for square corners on my layout. You can actually use the rounded corners if you want them rounded. I just like the square corners. I just 
don't know, I've always liked the squares over the rounded corners. So to put them down, basically all you do is you run a very, very narrow strip of glue down the side of your paving slabs like this. And then you get your little bit of curbstone. Make sure the sticky side is on the bottom, obviously. And literally you just put it in place, just like you would with the other stones. Like this. You can use your tweezers just to manipulate it and just to make sure that it does stick down so that if it doesn't stick to your fingers when you're pulling it around because if it sticks to your fingers you've got the danger of it pulling out. Tweezers are a very 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 good tool to have when making model railways because they allow you to get into small areas that you might not be able to get your fingers in. It also allows you for very small manipulations. As you can see, what I'm doing now is this had just come out a little bit. Hadn't quite stuck down. So I was using the, my, my tweezers just to push it back in. So it's pretty simple. So you continue that all the way down. And then that's how you do paths. Or how you finish your path off. I've got a few little sections up here that just need doing. Sorry about this. So once I've got this in, I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing to the houses. So, here we are. My paths are done. I'm just waiting them for them to dry on this section of the board anyway. I've still got the front section to do. I'll be doing them shortly. We'll be working with our little terrace house to put a garden in. Hopefully, if all goes to plan. However, the one thing that the Metcalf kits do come with, they come with this board here. Now, these path stones can be put on this board and can be applied to this base bottom board, whatever you want to call it. Pretty easily, you just stick them down, glue them down, and they work. The curves actually do line up. But since we've put ours on the baseboard, that over the top, doesn't look so good, does it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on the cutting mat, and we're going to trim this baseboard down with a scalpel so that the um, stones, the paving slabs are all the way and they go underneath. If you can see that, but I've done it so they go underneath the kit, so it hides them. And so it looks like it goes all the way up to it. So no matter where you position the building, it should be fine. Now, people will be saying, well, why don't you just stick the things on here? Well, I wanted a wider path than this, this little section here. Because with that bay window, we've got no path space here. And also, I want to be able to lift these buildings off, so eventually I can cut into them later down the line, and I can put some lighting in them. And so I can move them around in case I want to change it up a little bit. Basically, I want it out of flexibility. So I'm going to get them in the cutting mat. I'm going to cut around the edge very carefully with a scalpel. And then place it back down and see what it looks like. Welcome back again. So, as you can see, I've put these the houses there. They're not attached down, they're just placed there. The front of the shops I've cut away. So it looks nice and on the um, nice and flush to the pavement slabs. I've left a little bit of doorstep on the door there and a little bit on the shop doorstep there. Uh, it's not in its final position, it does actually need to be moved around a little bit so that it fits on. So it should sit something like there. So there's enough path around both sides of the building. It looks all right. Eventually I'm gonna have some terraced housing up to it like this or something or the other, something like that. Obviously this is not permanent. So they'll be terraced housing. And we're going to start to form the streets. And then later on there'll be a back alley where it says BA here. Between them as another street goes on the back. Like the old terraced housing that you used to get. That were built in these old towns and stuff. So that's how I've done my pass. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and the progress that I've made. There's still a lot of work to do. I'm going to do a separate video on... Remove the remote control. I'm doing the houses at the front and the, the gardens. I'm going to do a separate video on that. Outside, I'm going to do a separate video on that and get the paths done just because I don't want this video to be too long and too stretched out. And I think it'd be nice to do some miniaturization modeling as well. So it should be nice to have fun with that. So we'll put this back to where this is going to be because I'm going to get more of these kits in a little while. Build some more houses up. Uh, in the meantime, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. Uh, remember to hit the like buttons, uh, comment and subscribe. Uh, even share these videos to your friends if you so wish. 
But from me, I just want to say a big thank you. I want to wish you all the best of health and luck. As once again, the coronavirus lockdown is starting to ease off. At least it should be by the time this video airs. <laughs> and I want to say thank you very much. And until next time, take care. So take care, look after each other. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.